Yo, what's up everyone? It is a new day here, and let me tell you, I am ready to make some more tutorials. So hopefully you guys are ready for some cool new stuff. We're gonna be going over lots of different array methods. This will help us work with arrays a little bit better. And you know what? You gotta check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a coding bootcamp that basically is career-centric. Their goal is to give you what you need in JavaScript-based web development to go get a job in the industry. So if you wanna take this stuff seriously and stop wasting time, and want to start jump starting your career, then check out Dev Mountain. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Highly recommended. Now, where are we going to go with these arrays? Well, I was thinking maybe it'd be kind of cool if we went a little bit more onto the console side here and just work with things a little bit more dynamically. So I'm going to try that for a bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to drag this code editor over just a bit, expose my um, hedgehog here. Over here we can dynamically code, so what we can do is we can create arrays on the fly. So I could say let grades be an empty array. I could go in here, I could put values in here as well. And when we press enter, it will give us whatever return there was. And an assignment doesn't have any return, so we get undefined. When we call methods that return things, we will get that value here. The first method is push. We actually used this in an earlier video. The way this works is you would just say grades.push, throw in a value inside of the parentheses, and what this is going to do is it's going to change the original array. And that's important to understand. So when we do this, the original array is being changed. Meaning when we talk about grades, it's not going to be one, two, three, it's going to be one, two, three, four. When you press enter, it's going to return the new length of the array. So if you do grades.length, you're going to get four. Now when we do grades, you can see the new array is changed. We get one, two, three, four. Now when we type out grades, you can see we get a new array, one, two, three, four. So the actual original variable has been changed. A similar method is dot pop. And what this is going to do is it's going to pop off that last element. So when I press enter here, we get the value four. So it basically popped off that four that was at the end and gave it to us. If we were using this inside a code, because it has that return value, we're probably going to reference that and use that. So we might want to do something like let popped value equal grades dot pop, something like that. And then that four is going to be assigned to this variable popped value. That's only if you need to reference that value. Assigning it to a variable is not required. You could just call grades dot pop if you're just trying to get rid of that value. So let's just do this with a couple more examples. Let's push some stuff on here. Let's push a four, uh, let's go five, just so we can get some different numbers in here. Push a 60 push us 603 <laughs> and now when we do grades.pop what's going to happen is it's going to first pop off 603 then 60 then 5 so we do the pop and we get a 603 do it again we get 60 and then do it again and we get 5 this is a first in last out technique so the ones that you put in first are the last ones to be removed all right, so two very similar methods we're gonna be using are shift and unshift. Now, these are going to work very similar to push and pop, but instead of at the end of the array, it's going to go at the beginning of the array. So just like push adds an element, unshift is going to add an element at the beginning. Pop removes an element from an end, shift removes the element from the beginning. So it's easier just to see that. So let's see what grades is right now. Grades is one, two, three. If I do grades.unshift and pass in a value like 40, what's gonna happen is it's going to give us that new length and grades is now 40, one, two, three. So very similar to push, but it goes at the beginning. Shift works in a similar nature to pop. It'll get that element off the beginning. So we just say shift and it's going to return us that value 40. I also wanted to show that you can put multiple items in at once if you just separate them by commas. So now the new length is seven and the actual grades array is one, two, three, 40, 20, 10, 40. Great, so you can use pop and push as well as unshift and shift to work with the end and the beginning of the array. But what if you wanna work somewhere in the middle? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that when you have an array, you can access any element using the index. So we could say grades and let's say we're trying to grab the 40 here, it's gonna be zero, one, two, three. So three is going to give us 40. And we can assign this any value we want. 
So that is how you change a value inside the middle of, a, of, of an array. But sometimes you don't just want to change one value, you want to change a section. And that's where the splice method comes in. So splice can be used to add and remove elements from the array. So first we're going to talk about deleting with splice, and then we're going to talk about adding with splice, and then we're going to go into replacing with splice, which is similar to what we did here. We replaced 40 with 40,000. You can do that, but at a whole new level using the splice method. So let's talk about delete. The way this works is we say grades.splice, and then let's say we pass in a two and a three. What this is going to do is it's going to start at index two and delete three items. So zero, one, two, it's gonna delete three, 40,000, and 20. And it's actually going to return a new array of those deleted items. So if you wanted to use this array in code, what you could do is you could pass this method call as an argument to something, or what I would recommend is just assigning it back to some variable. For example, it could be called grades removed, and then it's going to contain three 40,020. Now the original array is modified. You can see that those elements are indeed removed, and now we only have four length. So we have one, two, 10, and 40. Now to add to the array, it's a little bit more confusing. What we need to do is we need to say grades.splice, and we're gonna pass a bunch of stuff in here. So the first is where to start at. So we could say two, and then the next is if we wanna delete anything, similar to how we did up here. So we'll just say zero because we don't wanna delete anything. And then the next data is the information we want to add. So for example, we could add five, six, seven, and eight. And then when we press enter, we get what was removed, which was nothing. So then when we say grades, what happens is we get one, two, five, six, seven, eight, then we get 1040. So you can see that the start of the data we wanted to add is indeed at index two because we get zero, one, two. So here's where that data starts. So after that data, it just continues with what the array used to be. Now, I wanna challenge you guys to try to replace something using the information we talked about here. What if we wanted to replace the five, six, seven, eight with zeros? How would we do that? Pause the video, maybe give it a try. And now I'm gonna give you guys the solution. All we would do is say grades.splice, the first index is going to be two, and then instead of leaving this as a zero, we're going to delete four of them. So we would say we're gonna delete four, and then we're going to replace that with zero, 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 zero. So running this, we get the deleted items, and then grades is now one, two, zero, 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 zero. So that is how you do a replace with splice. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to use functions to sort an array, reverse an array, and all kinds of other variations. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully these things seem useful. Later on, you might run into using these things. Right now, it just kinda of seems like a reference, and it kind of is just a reference, but it is helpful to know that these things exist. So thank you guys for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy this content, as that really helps out this channel and means a lot to me. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.